Hi, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah. Okay. So this is Eva Papadogiannaki from the Technical University of Crete. And today I'm going to present you our paper with title Fingerprinting the Shadows and Masking Malicious Servers with Machine Learning Power TLS Analysis. This is a joint work with my colleagues Andreas Theophanus, Alexander Sevchov and Sotiris Ioannidis. And specifically, this is the output of the master thesis of Andreas. However, he wasn't able to travel since he's doing his military service back in Greece. So I was the lucky one to travel to Singapore and present our paper. So, yeah. Oh. Shall I? Ah, just, uh, just a minute. Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, let me start with some introduction. Well, of course, you closer to the microphone. Okay. Uh, as we all know, the adoption of network encryption nowadays is constantly rising, and um, of course, we can find all these numbers that show these trends in several reports, like the Google Transparency Report and many others. Uh, and apart from that, in the meantime, malicious entities take advantage of all these encryption protocols in order to hide their activity and um, all their activities. Um, yeah. And for example, we can see that um, in the Zay Scholar report of 2022, it was reported that 85% of the attacks nowadays use encrypted uh, channels to spread. So with this work, what we wanted to answer is the following question. Is it possible to uh, identify the activity of server and classify it as malicious or benign solely by analyzing <coughs> the, the contents of the TLS messages? Ah, and I forgot to tell you that we wanted to also investigate the extent of uh, the details of uh, what we can get from our analysis. So uh, let me start with some background about the TLS handshake. Um, okay, so the TLS handshake is followed by the TCP handshake and all the messages can be found in plain text. So nothing is occurred there, and we can find uh, significant information there about the TLS version, the cipher suits uh, used, and, and the extensions. Now, the client hello message includes um, the preferences of the, of the client in terms of uh, the TLS version to be used, the capabilities of the um, cipher suits uh, <coughs> that are supported, and uh, the extensions. <laughs> Here are some screenshots from the Wireshark, for, for example. And now the server hello message, uh, actually it contains uh, the preference of the server in terms of the cipher suit and the extensions. Okay, so now a fingerprint that uh, correspond to, corresponds to the server's preferences can be generated by feeding all the relevant data into a hash function to produce the hash digest. So if we feed the hash function with um, the information from retrieved from the TLS handshake, uh, we get this TLS fingerprint. So let's see what happens in, in the state of the art. So the state of the art uh, either focus on passive approaches or active approaches. Um, those that um, use passive analysis, uh, they calculate fingerprints for machine based on, on the TLS uh, messages exchanged. In addition, there are works that also employ machine learning in order to um, to understand if it's possible to do some classification or some prediction about the activity of the servers. As for example, uh, there are works that uh, perform OS identification or website fingerprinting. As I said before, there are also works that perform, that do active probing uh, to the servers. Mm. 
forcing um, the recipient of a custom uh, client hello message to respond accordingly in order to generate unique fingerprints. For instance, there is charm, uh, which is uh, the state-of-the-art fingerprinting tool nowadays, and it is used by popular internet scanners like Sodan or Sensys. And there are also works like ATSF and DSEC TLS. Um, what we do in what we do in this no, it's okay. What we do in this work is the following. We reuse the TLS client hello messages, the custom client hello messages that JARM proposes, and then exhaustively we keep removing uh, the cipher suit selected by the server and we keep sending client hello messages by removing uh, the selection of the server. In this way, actually in this way, we force the server to expose the order preferences of the cipher suits. Now we used several uh, data sources for the to get the benign domains and benign uh, IP addresses. We used the trunk list, and for the malicious machines, we used several block lists like the Feodo block list, which is, which is also labeled, and uh, we used also some uh, unlabeled block lists like block list DCI, bad guys, and SSLBL. We kept. Um, collecting all these IP addresses and domains on a daily basis and we probed the servers again on a daily basis and we did that for a five month period. Of course we did some filtering and data preparation. Uh, I cannot uh, dive into detail right now because there's not much time. Uh, all the details are present in the paper and we can discuss it of course offline if you want. And the data set that was resulted after all this uh, data preparation and filtering uh, is online and you can find it using uh, this DOI. So uh, we did some initial analysis and the first thing that we wanted to check is the, to get the number of responses per, per handshake and per, per different data source. We also wanted to check um, to get the top uh, cipher suits as uh, preferred by uh, its data source. Okay, so in this figure, we can see for e some examples here, and we can see actually the mean number of the successful handshakes per data source. You can see there that is uh, we have some servers operating in the DRID botnet, in the emoted botnet, and Tranco, etc. Uh, for example, you can see that the servers that operate in the DRIDEX botnet highly respond to all the TLS uh, connections that we started. And we can also see that the servers operating in the emoted botnet are super consistent to their responses. So what I, what I want you to understand from this figure and to keep uh, is that um, we can see that there is a pattern in the responses of the different data sources. So this uh, gives us, shows the potential in fingerprintability. And with this, uh, no, with this table, um, we present the top cipher suits as uh, preferred by the um, different data sources. Okay, so let's talk a bit about what uh, about our approach. So we uh, we followed two different approaches. We used the machine learning pipeline. The pipeline uh, was actually implemented by one author of this paper, and you can find it uh, online on GitHub. And we also, except for the machine learning pipeline, we also constructed two minutes left. Okay, we also constructed four different fingerprints uh, for each machine. Now, I will give you details uh, later on. Okay, the machine learning pipeline um, uses uh, three different models, Naive Base, Random Forest, Exit Boost, and 
the splitting uh, happened as usual, 80% for the training and validation and 20% for the testing. And now uh, let me talk a bit about the TLS fingerprints. So as I said before, we constructed four different fingerprints for each machine. Each fingerprint is corresponds to a single uh, feature category. Uh, as um, the state of the art does, for example, um, the fingerprints that correspond to the features that JARM use uh, are called uh, predefined. Uh, the fingerprints that correspond to the features that um, uh, this TLS paper use is called exhaustive. And DML selected are the features that are that were um, selected by our pipeline, and the all possible category are the fingerprints that um, are all the features uh, <coughs> inside the, the samples. So yeah, um, to construct the fingerprints, we used the algorithm, uh, the SA256, the and yeah, for the splitting, we used 80% for the fingerprint construction and the 20% for the testing. Now, uh, we did two different types of classification to evaluate uh, our concept and uh, binary classification to tell if a server is malicious or not, and the multi-class classification to uh, signify the specific botnet that a server operates in. <laughs> and here are the F1 score for the machine learning um, pipeline uh, in terms of binary classification. Exiboost was the best, so we used this model to test uh, on, also on newly added data as well, except for the holdout data set, and these are the results. Um, now, the machine learning pi pipeline uh, is evaluated um, and gets this F1 score. Now, the random forest uh, model is the best. And here, um, <laughs> we have the, on the table on top, we can see the fingerprints. Uh, the unique fingerprints, we can see that the ML selected uh, category gives a higher number of unique fingerprints when compared to exhaustive and predefined categories. And there in the figure below, we can see the overlaps and we can see that the ML selected category uh, gives uh, less overlaps uh, when compared to the other uh, categories. And Going on to uh, the evaluation, for the binary classification, we can see that the ML selected uh, category operates the best, while for the multi-class classification, we can see that um, more or less the, uh, the three uh, fingerprints, exhaustive, predefined, and ML selected, um, perform more or less the same. So yes, to conclude, uh, we implemented a tool that employs state-of-the-art active probing techniques and we enhance these techniques using machine learning and we are able to classify the servers either in a binary form uh, to tell if, it's, if the server is malicious or not and we can also identify the specific botnet that the server operates in if the server is malicious and uh, we were able to have a um, to do uh, the binary classification with 91% uh, precision and 95% recall. So that's all from me. Um, yeah, if you have any question, I would be happy to answer it. Uh, we can discuss it offline. I don't know. Uh, you can see our paper online also. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.